Hi everyone, it's Calvin Harris here from The Birding Lab. And if you're looking for your first pair of binoculars or looking to buy someone that first pair of binoculars to get into birding or any other outdoor sports or activities, I've got two fantastic options for you to consider today. So stick around while I go through two of the options. Okay, well I thought before we jump into what both binoculars are like in the hand, we'll spend a bit of time going through each of the specs. Now starting off with the Nikon Monarch 7 10x42s, we can see the big players here are the field of view, uh, of which the Nikon has 116.5 meters at 1000 meters. This is quite a big one because when you are looking at something a kilometer away or 1000 meters, you've got 116 meters of field of view. So that's the width that you can see. Um, the minimum focus distance here is pipped by the vortex slightly. We'll see that in a short while. Eye relief is a big one if you happen to wear spectacles. In this case here, the Nikon has 16.5 millimeters of eye relief. Um, both are fog proof, both are waterproof. Um, Nikon comes out slightly heavier at 660 grams and both have a neck strap and a soft carry bag included, which we'll talk about in a second with the vortex. Moving on over to the Vortex Diamondback HDs, uh, we can see here that the field of view is slightly less at 109.56 meters at 1000 meters. Here your minimum focus distance is slightly better than the Nikon at 2 meters. Your eye relief is slightly less at 15 millimeters. Both as I mentioned are fog proof and waterproof. The weight here is slightly lighter at 606 grams. Both have an extra, but the big thing for the Vortex in terms of a value add is that your glass pack uh, integrated carry bag harness system is included in the pack, which some people might find useful, which we'll look at a little bit later in this video. Okay, so I'm going to be looking at the first pair of binoculars now, which are the pair that I currently own myself. And these are the Nikon Monarch 7 10x42 binoculars. Um, I bought these in the United States. Um, there was a slightly better exchange rate at the time and I could get them a little bit cheaper than I could here in South Africa. Um, so looking at the binoculars, they come with the soft cover carry case. Um, I don't, you know, I just, I just use it to keep the binoculars in uh, for safekeeping and then I take them out. So looking at them initially, um, they are black um, and they are rubberized, so they, they've got quite a sturdy feel. Um, they're quite solid. Um, as we saw in the specs earlier, they're about 660 grams, so just over half a, ki a kilogram. Um, I'll have to work out what they are in pounds. I'll put that up over here. Um, just looking at them now in terms of what you get, um, the, first and foremost, I don't use the, the, the soft uh, neck strap that the binoculars come with. I find that uh, any tension on your neck over time can weigh you down. I also wear my camera with a 100 to 400 mil lens on my shoulder as well. So any pressure I can keep off my neck and my back, if at all possible, I try and do that. Um, so this is an aftermarket uh, strap that sits on your shoulders. I'll demonstrate it. So, um, some people call it a birding bra, but you know, whatever works and whatever's comfortable, I find. Um, so again, looking at them now, they come with this plastic uh, eye cup protector, which you can use um, to protect your binoculars from rain or dust. It, so they just fit on the top over there. And in terms of the bottom over here, the, the objective lenses have got these two covers as well, which are sturdy with these two loops that fit around the main barrels. Um, apart from that, um, I really enjoy using these. You might be wondering also what this colorful little tag is on the side. This was given to me by a friend from the US, USA, a birding friend, and it's just a microfiber cloth that I keep with me all the time because often my spectacles or my binoculars get a bit dusty um, and dirty. So I'll try and clean that as well uh, as often as I can. In terms of uh, my day-to-day -day usage, um, I find the, the optical quality excellent to these binoculars. The low light capability of these binoculars is great. It's one of the reasons why I chose these. Um, but the main reason for me actually was was my the eye relief which we saw in the specs earlier that the Nikon is slightly superior to the Vortex uh, with that which which means 
when you're looking at something, um, a, a normal person who doesn't wear spectacles will twist out these eye cups and look through the binoculars. Because I wear spectacles, I have to push my glasses right up to the lenses over here. Um, and that eye relief just makes a difference. It helps you to, to get a bit closer and to have a wider field. So when you're looking through your binoculars and there, you have those two little circles that you'll know what I'm talking about if you've looked through binoculars, um, it just gives you a little bit more room and that you can see a little bit clearer. Um, the only issue I can I can pick up with these binoculars, what I found um, is that the aftermarket service was slightly niggly. Uh, by that I mean I, I was a little bit disappointed. Um, one of these uh, loops on the side of the barrels of the binoculars over here, the plastic ones, did actually break as you can see over there. Um, and when I approached Nikon to uh, assist me with the repair of those, they said to me that it would be too expensive to repair and that I'm pretty much on my own. Um, I would have to either buy myself a new pair of binoculars or make a plan. So I chose the, the latter and I've put a just a cable tie on one of the barrels over here um, just to secure my strap. It's not ideal, but it works. I mean, the binoculars are still optically sound, so there's no reason for me to change them at this point. Um, Otherwise, the yeah, I'm, I'm happy with, with binoculars. Um, they say generally that um, with photography, you should invest in your in your lenses and spend a bit of money there. Um, for binoculars, uh, always try and buy the best pair that you can afford at the time. So whatever your budget is, try and add 10% to that and just stretch yourself a little bit further in getting your binoculars because you will own a pair of binoculars for a very, very long time. Whereas cameras or DSLRs, as we can see now, there's a big push towards mirrorless cameras. If you had spent that extra money on your DSLR camera now, they don't hold the value. Whereas you should, by and large, probably only buy one or two pairs of binoculars in your lifetime if you look after them correctly. Uh, um, what else can I say about the, the, these Nikon binoculars? Um, they sturdy in the hand, they, they're comfortable. I've bashed these, they're rugged, um, apart from that obvious uh, plastic loop on the side, which I can't even tell you how I broke. I was actually quite impressed with myself that I managed to do it. But other than that, they're rub, uh, rugged. I've got them covered in mud, dust, everything, just a quick wipe. They are waterproof as well, so you can rinse them under the tap as well uh, if you need to. Um, so they are hardy and they will last a long time if you look after them correctly. Okay, so now I'm back with the second pair of binoculars and uh, as you can see another birding bra uh, that I'm wearing and um, this is the, the Vortex Diamondback 10x42 HD binoculars. Um, in my research it looks like there used to be a standard pair of Vortex Diamondback 10x42s but they weren't HD which looked like they discontinued at this stage. Um, the, glaring, the glaring aspect of these binoculars is obviously this glass pack uh, integrated on a neck harness system which um, which is great because you don't have to spend the extra bit of money uh, to buy the next uh, to, to buy an aftermarket back strap like, like I've got earlier or birding bra I think I'm going to coin that term now um, someone ripped me about it a while ago but I'm going to stick with it um, so let's uh, let's open up the, the bins over here I did show you that this this uh, glass pack bag is quite handy in the in the unboxing video um, again first first uh, things first we've got the the eye cup protectors, um, these actually feel a lot softer and, and a little bit more premium than the, the Nikon versions, I must say. Um, and they, they, just, they just overall feel a little bit, uh, a little bit better. Um, we're going to twist out the eye cups to show you as well um, what, uh, what these look like. Uh, and then at the bottom as well, you can see uh, the objective lens barrels uh, uh, protectors. Those are also held together on a ring um, like I showed you earlier. Um, I'm going to twist in the eye cups and just give you a little impression of what they feel. So the first thing I can notice immediately, uh, because I wear spectacles, like I mentioned earlier, is that the eye relief is so much better on the on the on the Nikon. Not to say that these are terrible, and don't get me wrong. If you don't wear spectacles, these binoculars are fantastic. Uh, I could easily take my spectacles off on both binoculars and twist out these uh, eye cups, and I'd be happy with either of them. Um, optically, I would put them on par. There's very little fringing or uh, chromatic aberration that I notice uh, when looking through them. Um, I just find that I'm not able to easily to see as wide a field um, because the eye relief isn't, isn't as great as, uh, as the Nikons. Um, in the hand, they do, they, do, they do feel a little bit more sturdy. Um, they feel like they're a lot more metallic um, than the, the Nikons. As I mentioned, the Nikon are quite rubberized. 
uh, but the vortex have got this like metallic uh, uh, it must be like a military grade plastic or something like that because it's definitely not metal but it feels metallic um, they also this this great uh, sort of um, army green color if I can say that as well uh, so they they'd be nice and suitable for the bush in terms of blending in they're not going to stick out like a sore thumb if you're wearing a white shirt in the bush like some people have done already um, it just looks like I haven't uh, uh, done this loop correctly here so that's that's why that slipped out it's purely my fault um, but in the hand fantastic binoculars um, you can see your diopter over here that's where you would adjust uh, for your right eye to make sure that the binoculars are suited to your vision everyone's got different vision um, so that's where you would make that slight adjustment um, but overall a great pair of binoculars you would not uh, be bad or worse off if you uh, purchased these binoculars looking at the integrated glass pack uh, bag system that the Vortex come with. Um, for me personally, I would probably stick with this. Uh, I wouldn't go with the, the included uh, soft ne neck strap. Like I mentioned earlier, I c often carry a, um, a DSR lens with a 100 to 400 mil len lens on. Um, so I would I would be happy to stick with this. I don't think it would get in the way. My camera would stand to the side, and I'd be quite happy with walking around this with this on my chest. You do also get these side pouches, which you can put car keys or anything else on the side there is one with the zip on the front as well uh, for a bit of safety um, so you're welcome to try that as well all right we're just trying a bit of digiscoping now this is with the nikon monarch 7 sorry apologies for the shaking but i'm, I'm holding the binoculars up to the lens here with my hands um, so i'm just going to change the focus slightly just for you to do a comparison so this is the nikon monarch sevens see how they compare to the vortex in a second and i'm going to pull the binoculars away from the lens here just so you can see how far we're looking across so i was pointing the binoculars all the way to the other side of the dam over there that's what you could see so that's what you get with the 10 magnification Okay, now we're using the Vortex Diamondback 10x42s. Um, looking at the same place over there, I'm just going to play with the focus. Bear with me while it shakes, I do apologize. Um, that is looking across the dam now. Hoping that that is in focus. And then once again, looking at the exact same point that's on the far side of the dam over there. Um, and I hope you get a good sense of the comparison between them looking through the lenses. All right, so in conclusion, after looking at both options, which one's better, the Nikon Monarch 7 10x42s or the Vortex Diamondback HD 10x42 binoculars? All being said, weighing up the pros and cons, I've got to give it to my tried and tested Nikon Monarch 7 10x42s. The deal breaker here is the eye relief. It's just so much better on the Nikons uh, for me personally. Um, wearing spectacles it's, it's how I bird it's how I look through binoculars so it's the biggest factor for me reasons to consider the vortex though lighter weight more premium build quality better value adds in the box with the glass pack integrated backstrap system um, they're ov overall optically an excellent pair of binoculars but the trump card for me is the eye relief on the Nikon binoculars thanks so much for watching this video if you found value in what we did hit that like button or consider subscribing to the channel where we want to bring you more of this kind of content and improve what we do and our delivery so thanks again for watching keep well and keep birding if I open up my eyes.